Hello, everybody. Oh, am I too loud? I guess I am. So, anyway, welcome to my way with WordPress. Uh, my little talk this afternoon. So that's me. I'm Bud Krause, and uh, the company I have. It's a one-man company. It's called Joy of WP. And do I hear? Do I see somebody's hand raised? No. I guess I do. Anyway, um, more about that later. Let's just get into the good stuff. So, um, I think I'm going to take a, well, let's see, let's see how this is going to work. Anyway, my story today actually has a story. I need to give you a little bit of a backstory as to why I'm here and what this is all about. And um, about two years ago, a guy by the name of Marcus Couch, who was a, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, speakers, or I, I guess he's one of the podcasters for... WordPress Weekly said, hey, I am going to be working for Smashing Magazine. We need articles. So I got in touch with him and I said, you know, I have a great idea for an article. It's called The Golden Age of Web Design. And I wrote it and it took about six months for them to say, nah, we don't want to do that. So I said, well, Marcus, what do you want? He goes, well, give us something like original. And I said, how about if I wrote an article about being visually impaired? and how I work with WordPress, and he said, oh, that's great. And my feeling was, you know, do I really want to do this? Like, it's not really what I want to write about. Uh, it's not something that I necessarily hide, but really, is anybody interested in this? He goes, are you kidding? Everybody will be interested in this. So I wrote it, and it turned out, yes, a lot of people read the article, commented on it, was interested, and then eventually I said, you know, maybe I should just turn this into a WordCamp talk. So this is the first time I've ever doing this as a talk, so we'll see how this goes. So that's sort of the backstory. And um, <clears throat> here's the article that I wrote, I promised that. So here, it, it, was, it, didn't, it was not my way with WordPress, it was a different title, but like I said, it got a lot of attention. Okay, so about today's talk. So when you think of you know accessible design, what do you think of? Do you think of HTML markup, right? You know, the alt tags, and, Aria and you know how to make a tab index and all that fancy stuff that people use for their coding and stuff. Yes, that's one of the things I think of. Uh, the WCAG or WCAG, I've heard it pronounced in many different ways. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which by the way have you know because it's part of a, a worldwide web consortium, it's coming right from this area. Um, yes, I sort of think of that when I think of accessible web design. I think about testing, right? You have users testing and screen readers, and is this thing accessible and all that? Uh, yeah, I think people think about that. Whether it meets various uh, uh, rules and regulations, ADA and Section 508 and all that. Well, if that's the talk that you want to hear today from me, you're not going to get it. And that's OK, because you've already gotten it from other people who really are experts in the field. I'm really not an expert in the field. Yeah, I know a lot about accessible design. But it's not how I make my living. It's not, I don't consider myself to be a professional in it. But I know more about it than most people. But that's not what we're going to talk about. One of, the, one of the things I'm going to do is talk about me specifically, and then, of course, how I work with WordPress. I have macular or age-related macular degeneration. It's a condition of old age. I actually got it when I was 37 years old, so I wasn't that old then. But uh, I'm getting old enough to have macular degeneration. and. Uh, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about, and you probably heard of it, it's the leading cause of legal blindness in the United States. It just so happens that you know, I'm one of those people. Um, now I'm gonna show it to you, and I have this little warning over here. And uh, so be prepared here. It's not real pretty, okay? So this is what it sort of looks like. This is the closest kind of thing that I could get. You see on the left side, okay. On the right side, loss of central vision. That is really what macular degeneration is, how it presents. And so it makes, you know, recognizing faces and driving and movie theaters and reading really, really tough. Um, and, you know, it, um, what, what happens to a person who has a condition is that they start to learn how to see elliptically. It's not a perfect way to see, but your central peripheral vision tends to help you uh, compensate for the loss of central vision. Here's some other examples. It's kind of messy. I look at this and go, God, this is bad. And then I say, I ought to know. You ought to know. 
And here's an even worse case. So now this person over here has a really, this person's probably, I would say, 2,800 loss of vision, really, really serious. My vision is not like that, okay? But that is sort of like one of the, how it would be if things get really bad. By the way, I should say the people who have macular degeneration never lose their sight completely. Uh, they still have peripheral vision, unless they get another eye condition. Anyway, a few US statistics. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of statistics here, but just to give you a couple. Now, these come from the National Eye Institute. Uh, the first one here is, um, deals with uh, age and um, yeah, what happens over time. Uh, or actually age, and you can see, well, yes, it happens mostly, it's more prevalent, obviously, in the older population. If you look to the far left, they wouldn't even have my age on there when I first was diagnosed. And then here's a little breakdown by, um, by race, okay, so you can see it's predominantly white people, uh, in fact, mostly white Europeans are real targets for this kind of thing. And if you look over here, you can see male-female breakdown, and then this one I really love because it tells you, well, well, obviously it tells you that as our population ages, more people are going to experience the, and they already are, uh, age-related macular degeneration. I, I look at this chart and go, boy, if you have a uh, daughter or son that wants to become an ophthalmologist, that's a really good thing to go into. Okay. Um, so one of the things, how do they test for macular degeneration? What is the first thing that a doctor will do to say, hey, I think you've got a problem here? Well, they're gonna show you something called the Amsler grid. This is something that was invented years ago. And so normal sight, you see the nice grid, it's beautiful, everything lines up. I haven't seen it look like that in a very long time. This is sort of like how I see it. And it's you got a lot of wavy stuff in there. That is definitely a condition, or that's definitely an indication of macular degeneration. By the way, it, when, I, when we say macular, I, I don't want to get too much into this, but uh, it's, it's, it's the part of your retina that is the real core central vision that's responsible for that. And then right over here, you can say, wow, this is really bad looking stuff. Yes, it really is. Okay. I see things in a different way. I really, <laughs> this is not just a slogan or an expression, it's really true. So for one thing, I have problems with depth of field, or I, everything's very flat to me. And it's one of the reasons why I have a problem with steps. And you, you'll notice a lot of steps today have all kinds of markings. Well, that's because, partly for people like me, um, we just, and so because it's, everything's flat, we tend to fall, you know, through the, tend to fall when we go down the steps. That's not so pretty. Um, I also have a problem with contrast. And I hear a lot of talks, whenever I hear accessibility talks, they always talk about contrast, and trust me, this is really important, but it's very tricky. These eye conditions are very idiosyncratic. What works for me is not gonna work for somebody else. So, you know, I may have a contrast problem, but somebody with another condition, contrast not gonna be a problem at all, but I definitely have a problem with that. And I'm always really happy to see, as we go on in web development, that things are getting better, I think, in, 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 the, in the contrast field, way better than it used to be. Um, and I have color blindness, too. What would make sense, because the cones and rods in your eye are in the center of your vision, and mine are all messed up. So I can't tell like green and red lights, you know, but I can see the movement of the lights, so that kind of helps me. Now you might be thinking, like, why are you driving? And I, I belong to the Helen Keller School of Driving, which means it's not nice to say that, but uh, I only drive locally in my area, and uh, so it's not, I don't drive at night, I don't go on highways, and it's very limited to what I can do. And the other thing is, because I have two, my eyes don't function together anymore, I have sort of this prism effect, whereas I don't see a whole unified picture in my center, I see sort of a split. So everything's sort of like a shadow, uh, there's like a shadowing effect. And it's, uh, it takes a while to get used to. So, so these are, you know, parts of my problem. Now I am an instructor, so uh, take notes here. I am going to give you a quiz in a little bit. And uh, you might wonder, so how do I do it? Okay, so what about this my way with WordPress stuff? Well, I use Zoom. I zoom in a lot. I use um, actually, it's supposed to say speech, not talk. I don't know what the heck happened. 
And I also use um, touch, believe it or not, is an important part of how I do things. Um, so I'm going to show you a little video, because to watch me actually do what I'm about to show you would just take a whole long time, a whole lot of time. So let me just show you this little video. It runs seven, eight minutes or so. And you'll see sort of how I do this. OK, here's the video. Come up, it may not be easy to discern just how far you've come. 
In 25 short years, the band has grown into most widely and rapidly adopted media in history. Radio and TV certainly have their golden ages. Technology, culture, and other factors converge to make us up. And that's how I can hear what it is that I wrote. Now that I'm ready to go, what I do is I take this and I put in my HTML tags. So I end up with something like this. You can see the tags are in place, except for the very beginning. I'm going to zoom in over here so it's easier for me to see, and I'm just going to put in the P tag over here. And I'll put in another P tag over here. One more over here. This is one. And one more over here. And the rest of the markup is in place. If I look for the places where I put in the, here we go. You can see I put in the link markup. It's very simple markup, and that's fine. Now I'm ready to create my post. So what I'll do is I'll just select all the text, and I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go over to here, and we see that I've already started with the golden age of web design. So I'm just going to paste it in over here. Command D, that's fine. Now when I work with WordPress, you know this print is a little bit small. I can zoom in right now and take a look and just remove this off together because I really don't need this. I already have this as a title. And that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and publish this right now. And we'll have a look. Well, okay, I don't have any images, I don't have a featured image, but I do have my paragraphs and headings, and in fact what I can see are just basically blocks like I see over here, like I'm highlighting, but I really can't tell you what it says. Yes, I could zoom in and I could read it but it's just a lot easier to do what I did before, which is just let my text to speech to Before work. There was chaos. The web entered its final best era of designers and user agents that made up the rules as they went along. Enter the web standards project. A group of forward-thinking designers who urged browser makers to observe a set of recommendations being developed by W3C. And that's fine. If I need to stop it while it's reading, I can just press Command-B again, and it'll just stop. Okay, now I do want to have a featured image, so for that I'll go back to the editor, and for that I'm going to go over here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and pick the image that I want. And I already have, I'm going to make sure I already have it in here, let me just zoom in over here. The golden age of web design, good, for my alt text, that's really what I'm concerned about. I'm now going to save, and you can see that I have the featured image in place, and let's just check on that, update. View the page, and I proved to get that I'm not a graphic designer, but you get the point. The golden age of web design has now a featured image, and again, I just check in to make sure that the alignment of my text is correct, because that's about the only thing I can do at this point. And I check to make sure there aren't any tags hanging out or any markup that I need to fix. Okay. So you can see that, you know, my way of working with WordPress is kind of a lot like your way of working with WordPress. That obviously was the old editor. As far as like how I do it with Gutenberg, I really only use Gutenberg for client sites, so I'm still not using it for my own site. But Gutenberg is also very good, as you probably most people know, as um, accepting to make pasted documents, and it'll work just the same way. Um, if not actually better. So one of the things I've come to realize is that the way I do things is that I recognize patterns, and that's really an important part of my process of how I do things. Um, 
and it just shows up all over the place in terms of, um, you know, like obviously in real life, but as far as actually working with code, because I, I'm pretty good with some things, and it's because I recognize the patterns, and that's a good with other things, like for example, HTML. It's pretty easy to recognize the patterns because it has a very predictable method of you know, how, how the tag's set up. So that's pretty simple to, to recognize for me. CSS is also very predictable how it looks and works, so that's also relatively easy for me. But then this gets to be some work, okay? Because it's not as predictable. You know, when you get into PHP and JavaScript, those are very expressive languages, and it's not predictive, and you get all over the place. Now, this is okay for me. It's kind of rough. It takes me a little bit longer to work through it. Definitely slower than most people. But, you know, eventually I figure out, oh, there's a pattern to this, too. So, not a problem. At, at, but at a certain point, it does get to be a problem. And then, this is like the ultimate problem for me. And it's one of the reasons why I, I just cannot get where to get started with JavaScript is because it's just, to me, all over the map, it is just not predictive, predictable, and you know, so that's a problem. But recognizing patterns is just essential for how I do everything, not just in uh, um, WordPress, but just living. And then another thing I've come to realize is that I can't wing it, okay? I can't just come up here and not be prepared. I can't do anything without preparation. I am a preparation freak. Uh, for example, I am print impaired. I can't read anything. So how am I going to come up here and read notes? Which means I have to like memorize everything. And it's a pain in the neck, but I just do. But the good side of it is I think it makes me better at what I do. And let me give you a couple examples. Like when I teach, I do a lot of teaching in class and online. I, I have to know exactly, I'm going to be doing this, 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 and this, I'm not, you know, going to, you know, pretty much going to stay in a lane and teach people, and what it does is it creates a very structured approach to teaching, and I think people have always liked that, so I'm not all over the map, I'm going to tell you we're going to start from here, we're going to go to here, we're going to go to here, so it's sort of like storytelling, and that is definitely the way I do instruction and teaching, and from what I know, what people have told me, it works. And then as far as working with client sites, like I'm always prepared if I have to do a presentation or I have to do something on the phone or you know, we have to do something together online. I know pretty much before I do anything what I'm going to do. So I have to prepare. And if it takes me a little bit longer, that's the way things go. I just know I can't just wing it. Okay, I just have to be able to be prepared. And sometimes that means a lot of small little details have to get worked out in advance before I do a prep or to do a presentation or to, to do anything for that matter. So, you know, I know sometimes I, I marvel at people who don't need all this preparation that I do, but it's just the way it goes. Hopefully there's something good that comes out of it. Another thing that I've learned in working with WordPress and just in life in general is I'm always searching for alternatives. And actually, you know, when you think about it, alternatives are the bedrock, the hallmark of what we talk about when we talk about accessible or accessible web design. It's all about alternatives. Heck, we have the alt tag for images, but that's just the start of it. And one of the guidelines in the web content accessibility guidelines, one of the principles is to use alternatives. So if somebody can't perceive it or they can't read it, then they can hear it out loud and vice versa. There's always this. So the way I look at it is like, well, how, if I'm in a classroom setting, how do I, and I'm teaching WordPress, how do I, and somebody doesn't understand something, that's like an accessibility issue, okay? They just can't access and get that information. I have to come up with ways of creating, you know, using an alternative to explain something. Maybe it's going to be a metaphor, maybe it's going to be a picture, maybe it's going to be a video, maybe it's going to be whatever. I'm always thinking about how do I get some, a point across I have to use alternatives. It works. It's good stuff. I think people should just do this, you know, with, I mean, I'm just saying this is the stuff that I've learned over time. And, um, you know, alternatives are, are really the essence of accessibility. Without, you, you just have to think through, like, how is somebody going to, uh, well, just take, like, a screen reader, okay? Well, that's an, that's an alternative. They're listening to the words instead of reading the words. Um, it's just really important. And I know this looks a little silly, but I don't always think that I have a lot of patience. 
But I've learned to have patience with myself and students and clients because um, sometimes it just takes us a little bit longer to learn something or to do something. And in my case, uh, the only way I ever learned anything really was to sort of go slow, take it at my pace, and be patient, and keep working at it, and eventually it'll come. I know more about manipulating PHP than I ever thought that I could do, and I probably could do more, but it just takes me longer to do it, so I have to have patience with myself. And uh, I, have, I like to think that I have patience with clients and patience with students. I don't really have patience with my family, but that's another story. Um, so that's definitely part of the process. And I like to think that I have gotten by with a lot of, a lot of people, okay? That either these are tech people uh, that work at schools, or um, I, have a, I have a person who does a lot of my, um, uh, she does uh, proofreading for me, because you, know, you can't trust me with words. And she, you know, she's very good and helps me out. So there's a lot of people who have just given me all kinds of help. You know, that really, that not only means in WordPress, but in life in general, I'll be standing somewhere and somebody will see that I can't see something and they'll come by and they'll say, hey, do you, you, you need some help? I used to, um, when I was a lot younger, I, you know, I didn't want people to know that I couldn't see very well. And now that I'm older, you know, <laughs> it's sort of like I've, I've gotten used to it. But it was something that I just didn't want in the beginning. And now I will absolutely take help from somebody and not just get so upset that you know, I can't do it myself. So what I like to think of is that low vision is, on my best days, I think that low vision is my own personal app. It's sort of my filter on the world and how I see things. And hopefully it makes me better at what I do than somebody that doesn't have this gift, if you will. It's not really a gift, but if you look at it that way, you know, I've looked at that and said, geez, I have done things better, I think, because of the fact that I can't see. Now, only other people can really make that judgment, not me, but I do think that it's, in many ways, helped me um, do the things that I do and hopefully do them in a better way. So it is, it's definitely a filter on the world that's different than other people, but it's, um, you know, it's something that, I think I've learned to harness and, and use the best to the best of my ability. Okay, a few little words about me because we're getting to the end here, and I don't. I like to do the intro at the end. So uh, I mentioned Joy of WP. It has free WordPress videos, and in fact, before when I was talking about preparation, I have over 50 free videos, and when I do all these videos, there's no script. I can't read from a script and then do my you know, training videos. I have to just do it and I have to know exactly, hey, I'm gonna do it in this order, I'm gonna demonstrate how this plugin works or this theme or whatever. And um, a lot of people think it comes out really good because it certainly comes out natural and not scripted. It's pretty obvious, you know. I obviously take out the alms and I do all the editing, but uh, you can just tell that it's just me talking about stuff. So uh, I have over 50 free videos at joyofwp.com, of course. And you're free to, anybody who wants to learn WordPress and Gutenberg, whatever, you're certainly free to go use all those things. And, and lots of people do. So, um, uh, and when you're there, if you do, I'd love it if you sign up for my newsletter. I know I probably shouldn't do this, right? But um, I do have a newsletter that comes out just about every Sunday, not today. And I talk about three things about WordPress that I think will help out the average person in their sites for whether they're nonprofits or uh, for their businesses. So this is me at the end of the talk because you can see how I've aged since the beginning, right? I've got a whole lot older. And I got a 12 string guitar now instead of a 6 string guitar. And um, that's really, that's the show, folks. That's all. So thank you very much. I think I'm glad I told you to clap. Uh, so, uh, any questions about anything? Yes? No? Uh, yeah, yes? I have a question. Um, when you go to other websites, what are the, the biggest um, accessibility problems that you see from there? Well, I think, and I, you know, this is of course just me. I can only speak for myself. I think the web has become more accessible. Now, 
you know, other people say, no, that's not true. I'm just speaking on behalf of myself. But I think that the things that bother me bother just about everybody else, like pop-ups and stuff like that. Um, but I don't have a specific, God, this is just really inaccessible, because companies have just gotten, I think, just much better at it. Of course, we have the, in, in general, the thing that I really um, find very heartening is uh, <clears throat> that designers and developers over the last 10, 15 years get it, okay? They now put accessibility front and center. They know it's not something that you, later on, like you throw on ketchup onto a hamburger or what, after that you make the hamburger, okay? That's not how accessibility works. It's, it's a, I look at it as a value that has to be intrinsically built into anything that it made, plugins, themes, WordPress core. It has to be built into it from the start. You can't just throw it on my ketchup, like I said at the end, because it doesn't work that way. It has to be from the ground up. That's the time when you start thinking about accessibility. And, you know, if you make something accessible for people like me, chances are you've made it better for everybody else. So I hope that helps. Any other? You know, when you ask questions, you'll get the best stuff out of me, just a little clue. <laughs> Anything else? Go ahead. My hearing is not good anymore either. I'm, I'm running new to this, so I don't know if this is on or not, but um, the, um, you talked about a featured image. Is there a difference for accessibility if you just put an image in in the top and add media, or if you should you really always use the um, like that's the, the image that's part of it? If this isn't really an accessibility matter, you know, do you, do you adding or not adding a featured image? Uh, featured images are just sort of one of the things that you'll find with most WordPress themes. And um, no matter if you add a featured image, of course you want to use alternative text so that if somebody is using a screen reader, the words will be read out loud. Now, interesting for me, okay, because if you saw that what I use, I don't use JAWS or I don't use any of these fancy screen readers that people who can't really see anything use. Okay, so I just use, as you saw, the software that's built into the Mac operating system. It does not read the alternative text description. It doesn't, it's not really designed to do it. It's just designed to do, as I showed in the video, I just highlight the text and it's read out loud. One of the nice things, going back to what I said a minute ago about designers and developers being more sensitive to the needs of people like me, is that they're not thank heavens, no longer really putting uh, text, you know, graphical text anymore. You don't see people putting in, um, for many reasons, not just accessibility, but it's a really good thing that people are no longer using uh, graphical images to present text. That's a really good thing. So that's a long-winded answer, but I hope, I hope that helped. Like I said, if you ask me questions, you'll get the best stuff. So that's what I always tell my students. Ask me good questions, you get the best stuff. Okay. Um, is, um, are there any funny stories that you can tell about interacting with government? Uh, or funny stories interacting with government about accessibility? Or have you ever had any funny <laughs> Yeah, like trying to stay away from the government. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kind of story. I don't have any, um, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head about interacting with the government and funny stories. But, you know, just going, just in general, I will say, you know, I'm really just, it's just great that things have become, I think, better over time. And I think everybody just sort of understands it. And just one of the reasons why, very simple, it's the ADA. Without the ADA, um, which was passed, I believe, in 1989. It really changed everything gradually, but did change things for the better. I know in the beginning a lot of businesses complained about it, and now everybody says, you know, if you make things accessible for those handicapped people, it'll be good for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm all for that. So I'm sorry about any funny stuff for the government. Oh, Anything else? I have a question. Sure. Um, so I work for a school nonprofit, and we have a a large population of children that are you know, either blind or you know, have uh, uh, cognitive disabilities. Right. And I'm just trying to develop for myself sort of a thought process for when I approach developing a site or a page, 
Uh, what, what, what is your sort of thought process like when you're going through from A to Z? Like, what, what are your considerations you think? Well, but, you know, it's really, this is a, you know, this is a hard field and a hard thing to answer to just at first blush. But I, when you say cognitive, you know, the thing that I, I learned a long time ago, you know, it's funny, I know that I don't make my living with accessible design, but 20 years ago, I was teaching accessible web design at Pratt Institute in New York City. So, uh, you know, so I got in on it pretty early. But, and one of the things that I learned back then, like take cognitive, okay? So we always think that like images are you know, bad for people with disabilities. Well, if you have a cognitive disability and you don't understand stuff, images might be the best thing to use. So that's what makes us a very difficult field because you know, people they tend to think like, oh, don't use images because it's bad for, you know. Well, no, it's not that simple. So as far as a thought, I think, well, study and observation and seeing how people learn. You know, in my case, the disability I have is not really being visually impaired. That's not a disability. The disability is learning. It's not being able to learn. It's not being able to retain information. You know, if you never see something, did you ever really learn that? You know, the expression, seeing is believing. Man, that is so true. When I want to retain information, I can't do the auditory thing. I have to look at it and really think about it and use the patience. But, uh, so my feeling would be, to answer your question, which I would focus, I would really study, how do children in your, in your population, how do they learn? What do they do? What do they like? How do I appeal to that kind of thing so that you can, you know, you can bridge that gap, if that makes any sense. I mean, that's, because it's, you know, it's a hard thing to do. Like, it, you know, when you get into this field, it's so broad because people have so many, there's so many different issues to deal with. That one solution for one may not be so good for the other. So keep that in mind when you're going through that. Anything else? Okay. I don't see anything, but of course, I don't see anything. So I, I finally got you to laugh. Okay. <laughs> I feel much better now. All right. Um, I'll be around. So I'm not going anywhere. So if anybody wants to discuss anything, like my mother has this, or my father has that, or my sister, go ahead. It's okay. We can do that stuff. Okay? Everybody good?